I am called in this meeting of the town of Silver City Council to order. Would you please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and welcome everybody. Under item uh, number three, uh, since July 22nd through July the 30th, 2017, is Clay Festival Week, the town would like to recognize this with a proclamation. City Arts and Culture District will present their sixth annual signature clay festival in Silver City with events from July 22nd through 30, 2017, to demonstrate how clay in its many forms is significant to our history, present, and future. And whereas the 2017 Clay Festival will feature artists from around the country, such as B. Clark. Clarence Cruz, Marco Fields, Louis Sackett, and local Silver City artist Zoe Wolf. And whereas the Clay Festival provides exceptional recreational opportunities such as the Clay Fest Market, Farm to Table, Clay Poker, Clay Brunch, Youth Events, and Free Events. And whereas the Clay Festival provides many educational activities, including hands-on workshops and lectures, as well as tours, exhibitors, and demonstrations. Now, therefore, I, Ken Ladner, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the town of Silver City, Grand County, New Mexico, do hereby proclaim July 22nd through July 30th, 2017, as Clay Festival Week. Congratulations, me and Ryan. Would you all like to say something? I'm getting you to turn around. Oh, hey, me. appreciate it and thank you Raul for coming up with the idea to do this um, I'm you know we're coming down to the last few weeks before the festival begins and so I can barely speak at this moment I'm tired and but I'm excited as well and I believe that this festival represents the best of the culture that we have here in this part of the country. So I'm very proud of it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I would just like to say a couple, a couple things. It gives me a great pleasure to, uh, to be part of all these events. And uh, I do ask, you know, be asked to be on, on, on certain things. And the, the thing that I would like to say is that the Clay Fest does bring the culture here in Silver City, here in Grand County, and I really enjoy working with Mrs. Brewer, and uh, she's actually, it's really nice that she actually will be talking on some of the radio stations about it to promote it, and uh, we'll just see you, see you there. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Mayor. Before you sit down, uh, I see you have a special guest with you. Would you like to introduce her? Matter of fact, um, I, I, uh, I built her out. She was at the Health Career Academy. So she asked to come to, uh, you know, sit into the town council meeting and have a little bit of a dinner. And I'm so glad that she's here. And her name is Serena. Well, go ahead and see. And, uh, and who is she? And who she is my daughter, right. Serena Ray. Welcome to Vietnam. Thank you. You got it. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is public input, and it appears no one signed up for that. So the next item is council comments. Council Amon Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have um, four brief comments today. Uh, first, I want to remember that in 1804, Alexander Hamilton was shot in a duel by Aaron Burr on this date. Alexander Hamilton is a hero of mine, so it's one of those things that I keep track of. And I am glad that we do not have dueling anymore as a way to resolve our differences. Uh, the next thing I want to say is that at our last council meeting, we had uh, the public input about aggressive hand panhandling downtown. And I followed up with that as a citizen working with uh, Kelly, uh, Kellington and Rebecca Martin from the Visitor Center to make some informational handouts. They're beautiful. And they should be here before the next council meeting. And we'll make sure that those are available at the Visitor Center from downtown merchants. Um, I'll probably be thanking some to the chief to, to have him distribute them if it seems appropriate and in the town uh, offices because they really they say what aggressive panhandling is and what you should and should not do and I think that there will be wonderful educational materials for people downtown um, I want to say that uh, I got an opportunity to meet the Denny's hiring management last week and that was uh, a really gracious and uh, lovely discussion that we had and I got to meet Kelly who is going to be the general manager and surprising to me I was in a downtown restaurant a small business downtown restaurant and the proprietor expressed great excitement that Denny's was going to be having what he called Denny's University which means some real formal training for uh, servers because uh, he, he, he really sees that as being essentially a benefit to the community so I just wanted to say that for folks who have fear um, and then the last thing is that I saw in the Grant County Beat and in the Silver City Daily Press an announcement that Commissioner Alicia Edward will be having a listening session next Tuesday so that's a week from today and that's going to be at the extension offices which are on Silver um, street. So that's where you go to talk to Judy about cooking and 4-H and stuff like that. And that will be next Tuesday from, uh, I believe it is, I think it starts at 6. I did not write that one down. But the county has a proposed ordinance to allow off-highway vehicles on, in, on county roads. And Commissioner Edwards has uh, set up this listening session to get both sides of citizen concerns. And as a citizen, I do plan to attend. So I just wanted to announce that tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Patterson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to thank uh, Councillor Emmett Smith for, um, and, and Callie for putting together um, this little pamphlet about aggressive panhandling. I just want to clarify to those folks that didn't quite understand what we were talking about um, several weeks ago is that the ordinance that was done in 2010 was not about homelessness. It was not about someone coming up and asking you for money. It specifically was about aggressive panhandling. And um, I know the chief talked about that. It's really about um, asking someone for money and then 
not stopping to ask them or, or following behind them. The ordinance lays out very specifically what aggressive panhandling is. So I just wanted to clarify for some of the folks out there that may be confused about the fact that uh, it's not just an ordinance that covers homelessness and, and panhandling. Um, it was not built that way. It was built for very specific instances. Um, so I just wanted to state that. I also have the pleasure of being the, uh, the Denny's Hiring Management. Uh, they are um, going great guns to try to get uh, 100 people hired, get everything ready for uh, opening later this month. And um, I think they're, they're hoping to, to reach their hiring goal um, so that uh, they don't get slammed. Not as in grants on breakfast, but I'm sorry, I just had to say it. <laughs> I just couldn't help myself. But um, and uh, I will like I will also most likely be attending um, the as a citizen commission commissioner um, Edwards uh, listening session because I'm also I think there's several of us that are in her her actually her district so. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilor Tano. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just have one thing. Yesterday after I left the meeting here, I, um, I had a couple of errands, so I passed by Golf Park, and there was a young man uh, kicking a soccer ball against the, the mural that is in the park, and that kind of broke my heart just because I just helped repaint that mural, and I know that that chips paint. So um, I stopped and had a conversation with him and his mother, and he decided he would play soccer somewhere else. But the point I'm making is um, the murals in town are really beautiful, and I'd like to keep them really beautiful. So if you are a sporting enthusiast, that's probably not the best place to be kicking balls at or throwing balls at um, any of the murals in town, not just the one in golf park. So please find a different place to do your sporting activity. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Ray. Thank you, Mayor. I don't know if... Um has been mentioned about the fact there on, on how to speak for the veterans. It has been put up and I went to see it and it is very, very nice. And I would encourage people to go and see it and it's on both sides. Also, getting back to panhandling, and maybe Mr. Brown can see if there are some sort of grants out there. And also, to help with panhandling, maybe with the chief, you can ask us for, for, for permission or information. And also, maybe we can ask the town people or the town business people, the downtown people, to make a some sort of a money thing and maybe make them hire, let them hire their own security and help alleviate some of the problems that the Sewer City Police Department will have. That's just an idea. Maybe it won't, maybe it won't work. Um, I know I mentioned here a while back about uh, having some cameras downtown. I would still like to see it done, if possible. And I know that there are some groups out there that are going to say that it's an um, infringement on their privacy. I don't think it is. It's, it can be. It's got to be. We're here up here. We're here, here to protect the people from silver, and we have to do something. And I think that's one of one of the reasons that I want to see where we can have some some sort of cameras downtown, and that will help alleviate a lot of problems. God bless America, and thank you. Thank you. Does the council have any more comments? I'd like to remind the public that. Uh, the town is still accepting uh, designs for the Welcome to Silver City sign. Uh, you can go on the uh, town website or city hall and get the information that you need to submit a, a good proposal. Next item on the agenda is changes to the agenda. Uh, any councilors want to make any changes? Okay. Next item seven is the approval of the minutes of the June 27, 2017 
Regular meeting. Do I hear a motion? Councilman Aaron Smith. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve the minutes of the regular council meeting of the town of Silver City of June 27th, 2017. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor, I second the motion. Thank you. Is there any discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is reports. Mr. Brown? The only report I have is, um, oh, and then Milo's going to give a report. Um, uh, I was, the chief was asked uh, about that med return prescription, med return prescription drug, drug disposal kiosk that's out in front of the um, Office of Sustainability uh, uh, building. Um, it wasn't how much drugs, if it's been any successful at all. At all. And uh, it was installed in June of last year, and as of June 29th, um, it's collected uh, 527 pounds of prescription drugs. Uh -huh. So it's quite a bit of, of drugs getting off the street. So, uh, and that, um, they leave it to me. Any questions for Mr. Brown? Mayor, Council, um, I came tonight to give you a little update on our call status for the month of June and maybe answer a few questions about 4th of July. So for the month of June, we had 23 emergency calls related directly to fire, six actual fire calls um, in the month of June. Uh, 173 emergency medical services calls, five of which Silver City Fire transported due to unavailability of an ambulance from Gila Regional. Um, so it was, a, it was a pretty average month of June. Fourth of July, however, um, I know at the last council meeting I reported that it's been five years since we've had a grass fire started by fireworks, and unfortunately our number's going to stop there. We had eight calls for fires on the 4th of July. Uh, upon arrival, only one of those was actually a flame. So the residents were very proactive in calling us, um, but they typically, seven out of the eight calls had them extinguished by the time we arrived, which is a good thing. Um, we had volunteer assistance on two of those. Only one was a fire of any significance. Um, we did have one injury on the 4th of July due to fireworks. That individual had a very small burn and was no transportation until the original was needed. Uh, the Silver City Fireworks Show went off, pun intended, very successfully. Um, we felt that the show turned out very good this year. Uh, with the addition of the electronic ignition system, uh, the safety factor for that show was, was phenomenal. So I just wanted to give a brief update on that and remind citizens again that the period in which fireworks are, are legal for ignition has passed. Um, so please no more fireworks. Um, we also have moved forward and hired two inspectors to start the process of replacing me as the fire marshal. Um, they've been going out to the public on their own this week. Uh, they were in training last week performing inspections for local businesses. Uh, I wanted to make note that they are not um, they're not going out there and being excessively strict. They're there to educate the public so that business owners can move forward and, and make their business safe for their customers. So again, that was a large step forward for our department. Thank you very much. Any questions for the chief? Thank you. Uh, I wanted to bring something up uh, uh, based on what uh, Milo's report. Um, we've had an agreement with the uh, Healy Regional Medical Center uh, for 20, 20, yeah, 20, 20 years. years and multiple agreements over time and basically uh, agreeing to be back up to uh, Healy Regional for EMS. We're, pri we're primary response uh, on EMS calls, but we're not the transporting entity. 
we haven't had an agreement with them for over two years now. Three and a half. Three and a half years. And we're, we've been un unable to get an agreement with them. And as Milo just reported to you, there was five times we had to transport for them because they don't have the staff available to transport. And, and I've been told that, that recently the ambulance has been showing up with one person, just the driver. So we have to send one of our employees to ride in the truck with them. So they're taking our fire vehicles, which are primarily fire response vehicles, out of service. So I, I just wanted to give you the heads up that, that we've been trying for years and it's starting to come to this and it needs to be put out there now. So because we don't want to affect our fire service response uh, because of what uh, they've chosen to do. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to uh, add something to what Alex said. I've been involved in these negotiations for over a year and it's not a complicated matter, but dealing with the hospital has been a nightmare. You talk to one person and they give you one response. You talk to another person, you get another response. In the meanwhile, they're still expecting us to cover, the city to cover for them. When in those situations where Silver City personnel have to go on the ambulance, because the hospital is showing up without the proper personnel, which is a violation of state law, they don't even agree to pay us for that. So I've dealt with two of their lawyers. I've been dealing with, uh, Mr. Marshall has been dealing with their employees, with their director, and it's turning, this is the worst negotiation I think that I've been in in my 40 years of doing law. So somebody up there needs to get their head straight I thought I was going to say the other thing and and settle this thing for the public safety of the town it's been going on now for a, a year that I've been involved and we've all kept our mouths closed because we never want to reflect negatively on a fellow government agency but in this case it's gotten to the point where people's lives are being impacted and they need to start reacting for the benefit of the town Instead of just taking from us, they need to contribute to us as well. That's my point. And this was not rehearsed. I didn't know Alex was going to bring this up. But this has been horribly frustrating. And the, the hospital officials that are in charge of this, they need to address this because there are laws being broken as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Brown or Mrs. Cameron? Councilor Benson? Just one question. Have we submitted them an invoice? No. Well, we, we've tried to comply with this, the old agreement that we've had. We've been trying to, we've been doing the best for the community, basically. Right. But we haven't, we haven't sent them invoices because we've been trying to act in good faith through this whole thing. But it's gotten to the point where we have to say, well, we're transporting, we're not the, the transporting entity in this region. Uh, he original is and they're taking our fire personnel off the street and so if there was a fire they wouldn't be able to respond or if there was another EMS call in in this area in Silver City they wouldn't be able to respond and so it's, it's putting uh, like Robert said uh, people's lives at risk and, and it has gotten so bad that because we would respond and we would be the primary uh, ones uh, uh, dealing with the, the patient, uh, we use supplies. Well, they would reimburse us for the supplies. We're having a hard time with that now, too. Uh, so um, it's... I wasn't going to say anything, but three and a half years is too long. And, and I'm not saying that we should stop providing, I mean, because we can't. These are our citizens. But I do understand, I mean, what I think the citizens may understand is what is being responded with is a rescue unit dedicated to 
to rescuing people that are in traffic accidents and, and a whole slew of things. It's not just an ambulance. It is a rescue unit coming out of the town of Silver City. Um, right? Am I correct, Chief? Um, yes, it is a medical rescue. We typically, it's a, it's a two-tiered system in Silver City. So Silver City Fire and Hewlett Regional both send a truck. And I know that causes some confusion for years. People have wondered why two ambulances show up. In, in the technical world, they're not two ambulances. One's an ambulance, one's a rescue. The rescue unit, because of our placement with the stations, so the fire is able to get to on scene much faster, um, and we provide first response care. Here, the regional sends an ambulance that's responsible for transporting individuals that need transportation to the emergency room. Um, and, and our rescue units contain, um, you know, all the various equipment to extract people from vehicles. Yes, and, and, and I think that's different. I just want to make sure that folks are clear about the difference between an ambulance, um, that's a transport unit versus our rescue unit, which carries all this equipment with it in order to rescue people from situations. And I'm not suggesting in any way, shape, or form that we stop providing the services because we need to do that. People need to get to the hospital. They need to be transported. But I do suggest that maybe we might want to start sending new voices because three and a half years is quite some time to be outside of an agreement. Um, we never had any intention of stopping doing what we're doing. But now we're getting to the point where we're actually doing their job for them and taking us away from doing our job. And that's why I did, decided we needed to say something. Um, so hopefully they will come to the negotiating table and get this thing cleared up. It's basically a mutual aid agreement. Mm -hmm. The Las Cruces agreement is one page. What they've been sending to us is different versions of 10-page documents that looks like they're trying to set everything up for litigation. So we've been going back and trying to accommodate them, and each time we try to accommodate them, a different version comes back. One time, their attorney told me to tell Mr. Marshall to tell the hospital staff not to talk to us anymore. Uh, Councilor Ray. Mr. Donald and the Chief, is the Council aware of this? And what is, what is the role of the county in this situation here? If they have any. Uh, yes, they are aware of it. Um, their role, I, I can't answer that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Council, for your question. So the question is, is the county... Uh, appointed board of trustees at the hospital aware of this because they are the operations management body. It, it, it's basically starting with the end of right. but, but, but you haven't been successful I, the department and the attorney. That's why I brought it up here today. So perhaps the next move would be to explore getting on the agenda of the board of trustees. I know it's a big step. It's sort of like, you know, Paul pulling out the big guns, but it looks like that's the layer unless you approach the new CEO, right? Because you've already tried to negotiate with the department head yeah, with the with the department. and with the attorney. CEO, the old CEO. There's multiple CEOs. But there's a new one now who's ostensibly the permanent CEO. Yeah. But yeah. let's all make sure that this gets back to him, and then we will do some formal work. Okay. I know you're frustrated, I can tell. And I hardly ever see Mr. Brown frustrated, so. Well, these guys do a good job I, If something ever happens and we end up getting, these guys get blamed. Oh, yeah. You don't want that. That frustrates me. Oh, yeah. Any other council comments? Thank you, Chief. Mr. Brown, do you have anything else? I'm done. Okay, thank you. Next on the agenda is 9A, 
a public hearing entitled Approval Slash Disapproval of Ordinance Number 1260, an ordinance to amend the official zoning map for several tracts of land from a commercial district to the residential A single family, parentheses RA, district described as Lot 7 and the north half of Lot 5, Lot 17 in Silver Heights, addition to the town of Silver City, Grand County, New Mexico. The property address is 1707 Yucca Street, and the applicant is Joseph F. Mendoza. The hearing will be conducted as follows. The town council will serve as the hearing board, and I as mayor will be the presiding officer. The town staff shall present a brief synopsis of the application based on the application or actions taken below. Then the proponent of the application shall present his or her case. Next will come witnesses in support of the proponent's case. <coughs> the proponent, staff, or witnesses may then be questioned by the hearing board. The presiding officer will then ask the proponent if that concludes his or her case in chief and will state that the proponent and his or her witness shall remain available to be further questioned by the hearing board or by opponents to the uh, application. Following the close of the proponent's case, witnesses in opposition to the proponent's case shall be permitted to testify, during the course of which the witness may address questions to any previous witness, but such questions shall be made to the presiding officer. The presiding officer shall have the sole discretion in directing the question for response, considering whether the question is relevant, is cumulative to other testimony, or is otherwise inappropriate. Have any members of this hearing board had any ex parte discussions with any person regarding the subject matter of this hearing or had any communications from any party to this case? I did. I did, ma'am. Okay. Um, then can you tell us the nature of these discussions and disclose the identity of the person? The applicant, Joseph F. Mendoza, went to my house and he asked me a question and I told him that it would be up to the, it would be come before the council and that he was in district three and that was all that was said. So. Well in this case the council then decides whether uh, the councilor shall recluse himself. What say you? There's not some like last recusal. Because okay. so, yeah, there, there was no actual content just discussed. No. And you told him you were a District 3 council member. Yes. yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And District 1. Yeah. Not for oh. District 1. I'm sorry. And he did not contact us. Okay. So we all agree that Council Ray can yeah. participate in this hearing. Okay. Let the record show that everybody nodded in the affirmative. Thank you. <clears throat> Will all parties and witnesses intending to testify, including those staff members who intend to present testimony or who will be available for questioning, please rise approach the podium to be sworn in by the town clerk. If you have not been sworn in, you will not be permitted to testify or otherwise participate in this hearing. Do solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony I am about to give, that the testimony I am about to give in the matter before this council, in the matter before this council, is the truth, is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, under penalty of perjury, under penalty of perjury. Thank you. Thank you. 
and thank you. Are there any staff members here that will present the application for the hearing board's consideration? Will you please identify yourself and make your presentation? Yes, I'm Chris Alada Gamba, planner for the Town of Silver City. And I do have a slideshow, if I can get this to show up there. She's a realtor. She will be uh, speaking on his behalf after my slideshow. So the property is residential A on a portion of the west side of the property and commercial on the east portion of the property. It's currently used for a residence, which makes it non-conforming as commercial. The owner would like to rezone the whole property to residential A to assist the sale of the property. Uh, when the zoning map of 2010 was created, a few parcels were divided between two zoning districts. The property has a residence on the east portion of the property that's zoned commercial, making it non-conforming. And this adjustment will change the zoning of the property to residential A and remove the non-conforming status from the existing residence. And this property is located in District 1. Here is a zoning map of the property. As you can see, the west side, a little portion of it is residential A and the east portion is commercial highway. Here is a front view of the property. As you can see, it's a residence. Here's a residential property that's connected on the north side. And this is the lawyer's office on the south side of the property. When the Planning and Zoning Commission makes its recommendation to the Town Council and when the Town Council makes the final decision, they shall at a minimum make at least one of the following findings. The proposed amendment is in substantial compliance with the town's comprehensive plan. The proposed amendment will not adversely affect the implementation of the goals and policies of the town's comprehensive plan. The proposed amendment is justified in order to correct a mistake in the town's comprehensive plan, an error in the assumptions about the property, surrounding uses, population forecast, rate of land consumption, and other factors. The proposed amendment will not adversely impact the public health, safety, or general welfare and will promote the original purposes of the Land Use Code. The proposed amendment responds to changed conditions such as changes in assumptions on capital investment, road locations, population trends, land committed to development, density, use of further studies that have been completed since adoption of the Land Use Code. The proposed amendment is necessary in order to respond to state and or federal legislation. And the proposed amendment provides additional flexibility in meeting the objectives of the Land Use Code without lowering the standards of the Land Use Code. So the recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Commission, they recommend that the zone change be approved as it meets the following findings. Number one, the proposed amendment is in substantial compliance with the town's comprehensive plan. Number two, the proposed amendment will not adversely affect the implementation of the goals and policies of the town's comprehensive plan. Number four, the proposed amendment will not adversely impact the public health, safety, or general welfare and will promote the original purposes of the land use code. Number five, the proposed amendment responds to change conditions such as changes in the assumptions of capital investment, road locations, population trends, land committed to development, density, use of further studies that have been completed since the adoption of the Land Use Code. And number seven, the proposed amendment provides additional flexibility in meeting the objectives of the Land Use Code without lowering the standards of the Land Use Code. So that is my presentation, and um, Ms. Fell. Yes. You'll be representing the proponent. That's correct. 
Will you make your presentation? Well, I'm just here on behalf of Joseph Mendoza, his wife Cecilia. They listed their property at 1707 Yakko Street with me this spring, and uh, we promptly received an offer to purchase, and the buyer was purchasing it as a residence and was getting a mortgage. And it was uh, at the time the appraisal was being done that it was revealed that the property was owned commercial, which stopped the loan process. You have to have residential property to get a residential loan. So we began the process of requesting the zone change on behalf of Mr. Mendoza because at that point he had already moved to California to be near his children. Thank you. Does the council have any questions for uh, the staff or the proponent? Do you have any other witnesses in support of the application? Not here, no, sir. Okay. Does that conclude your case in chief? It does. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Please uh, remain available uh, if for any further questions. Are there any persons who wish to testify in opposition to this proposal, this application? See a none. Is the hearing board prepared to consider this application and render its decision? Yes, sir. Do I hear a motion? Councilor Bettison. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve ordinance number 1216, ordinance to amend the official zoning map for several tracts of land from a commercial district to residential A, single family, RA district, described as lot 7 in the north half of lot 5, lot 17 in Silver Heights addition to the town of Silver City, Grant County, New Mexico. The property address is 1707 Yucca Street, and the applicant is Joseph F. Mendoza. Um, so th this approval is per the recommendation and findings of the PNC Commission that have been read into the record. Thank you. Is there a second? Do you have a comment, Mrs. Cameron? No, I was just nodding my head. Oh, okay. Councilman Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I second that motion is stated. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Wait, it's a roll call. Roll call. Okay, roll call, please, then. Councilor Benson. Aye. Councilor Anderson. Aye. Councilor Ray. Aye. Councilor Cobb. Aye. Motion carries. Item 10A under unfinished business is the approval slash disapproval of ordinance number 1259. An ordinance amending chapter 10, article 2, business registration, title and sections 10-20 through 10-22, article 3, business license, section 10-44 through 10-64, of the Municipal Code of the Town of Silver City, New Mexico. Council Eamon Smith, are you the sponsor of this? I am. So uh, the com Community Development Department and uh, with the assistance of our legal counsel, Mr. Scavron and I have been working on this for some time. The main purpose of the changes in this ordinance are to streamline the processes by which people go through to apply for business license, which is business registration. We've combined that into one process and have spent many hours with the community development folks identifying ways to really uh, make it easier on the citizens. I've had a number of times where citizens have approached me and said, why does the town make it so hard to develop a business? Well, most of the time they've actually heard that through hearsay. It's not actually been their uh, direct experience. But I take it seriously that if there's some concerns about making it hard, we want to make it easier 
So there are a few changes in this. One is that there's a combined process for business licensing and business registration that will be handled simultaneously by the very helpful people who are handling business uh, starting in the in the town of Silver City who are in the community development department. There have been there's no change to the general fee for uh, applying and getting a business registration business license. There have been some fee changes for um, a, at a couple of instances and that's for the gasoline pumps there's been a small increase in fee and for wholesale uh, gasoline propane there's been an increase in fee we don't think that will be owners on the few entities in town that do that and I've had no pushback and I have been certainly open in asking people if there's been any concerns there's also been an inclusion of uh, making sure that when folks come in and apply for uh, to start their business that they have a checklist that the community development have gotten together and that's reflected in the requirements here in the ordinance. So again, the purpose of the ordinance is to make it easier. I've spent a fair amount of time with people who did start businesses and had two meetings with the small business development center here in Silver City and they gave us accolades for really really trying to work with the folks who are starting businesses or expanding businesses or relocating businesses here and I understand that um, in, in probably in the next few weeks there'll be a meeting with the small business development folks the folks from the town and perhaps the folks from the county to make sure that everyone is on the same page uh, with, the, with the changes and that's my presentation Okay. Well, seeing no questions, then I'm hoping everyone had an opportunity to read this, and I move to approve Ordinance Number 1259, an ordinance amending Chapter 10, Article 2, Business Registration, Title and Sections 1020 through 1022, Article 3, Business License. Sections 10-44 through 10-64 of the Municipal Code of the Town of Silver City, New Mexico. Thank you. We have a motion. Is there a second? Councilor Edison. Councilor Ray. Councilor Ray. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Roll call, please, then. Councilor Benison? Aye. Councilor Amos? Aye. Councilor Wright? Aye. Councilor Collins? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Congress. Thank you, Congress. The first item under new business, 11A, is the approval slash disapproval of resolution number 2017-16, a resolution approving a colonial infrastructure loan slash grant for a water line on Highway 15, Silver City, New Mexico. Mr. Brown? Um, Mayor Council, this is the loan grant agreement for the colonial grant that the town was awarded for the water line. <clears throat> um, so we will receive, uh, we're going to have to borrow $40,784 and we will be granted $367,054. Of that total, of that amount, I think it's $407,000 and, and some change there. Uh, that will be used to repay the previous loan that we got for the water line. So, uh, and then we will pay off the $40,000 loan this next fiscal year. We're going to have to build it into the budget, but we'll be able to pay it off this year. Um, so, um, these are all to, we're not going to, there's no design or any bid work that we'll be doing because uh, we're just uh, depositing this, these funds with the state of New Mexico for their DOT project on Highway 15 and they will bid this project out as part of their uh, high recon reconstruction. So this will be the last, hopefully, we have to deal with this project at all. Any questions for Mr. Brown? Councilor Edison? Uh, Ms. Brown, could you uh, talk briefly about what the extent of the water line is, just to remind us, and also, um, why the inclusion of, of uh, Arenas Valley and Rosedale? 
um, are <coughs> pertinent to this um, well, particular. Basically, because um, the extent is. Although the Highway 15 project is from Highway 180 near McDonald's all the way up to the 32nd Street bypass, um, this project, this portion of the work for the town's waterline only is from Pine Street down to Highway 180. Um, because there is so much drainage work that has to be done there, uh, we're going to have to move our lines, and so we've taken the opportunity to replace everything, upsize everything so that we could benefit um, because this is where uh, we're going to create another loop for Arenas Valley and, and Rosedale to get better service, uh, better flows. Um, and the reason that we do, it's, it's not so much that they get, have, we already have multiple loops to get the water, but when you apply for the grants like this and you say it affects not just Silver City, but these other colonias is, uh, you get a lot m more points, and, and it's and it's true because they do benefit from the project ultimately as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Do I hear a motion, Councilor Ray? Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve a resolution number 2017-16. A resolution approving a colonial infrastructure loan dash grant for waterline on Highway 15, Silver City, New Mexico. Do you want me to read the resolution? Okay. A resolution authorizing the execution and delivery of a colonial infrastructure project fund loan dash grant agreement by and among the New Mexico Colonial Infrastructure Board, CIB and the New Mexico Finance Authority, Finance Authority, and collectively with the CIB, the Lenders-Grantors, and the Town of Silver City, New Mexico, the borrower slash grant, grantee for the benefit of Silver City, Arenas Valley, and Rosedale in the total amount of $407,838, evidencing an obligation of the borrower grantee to utilize the loan grant amount solely for the purpose of financing the cost for the construction and replacement of waterline and solely in the manner described in the loan dash grant agreement, providing for a pledge and payment of the loan amount of $40,784. 40784 dollars solely for the net systems revenues and acceptance of a grant amount of $367,054, certifying that the loan grant amount, together with the other funds available to the borrower slash grant grantee, is sufficient to detail, is sufficient to complete the project, approving the form of and other details concerning the loan slash grant agreement ratifying actions here two four taken repealing all action inconsistent with this resolution and authorizing the taking of other actions in connection with the execution and delivery of a loan slash grant agreement thank you Councilman Ray is there a second Councilman Kano Motion is seated. Okay, motion and second. Any discussion? Roll call, please, Ann. Councilor Cotta? Aye. Councilor Ray? Aye. Councilor Aiden Smith? Aye. Councilor Bettis? Aye. Motion carries. The last item under new business is 11B the appointment to Planning and Zoning Commission. <coughs> We have received an application from Samuel Castillo, Sherry Clements, Chair of the Planning and Zoning Commission, as well as Jamie Embitt, Community Development Director, are in favor of this appointment. Therefore, if there are no objections from the Council, I would like to make this appointment. I know I'd like to say yeah. okay. There being no objections, I hereby appoint Samuel Castillo to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Castillo. Castillo. Yeah. Pardon? 
Castello. Oh, Castello. Thank you, Councillor Cono. Uh, this concludes the business of the town of Silver City. Uh, do I hear a motion? Mr. Mayor. Councilman Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to adjourn. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor, second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed nay. Meeting is adjourned.